part two of our kinematic podcast, we'll continue with some additional features on the other side of this model, then jump into a model that has lots of parts and a multi-loop situation that will try to show some different workarounds in assembly mode. Now let's jump over to the other side real quick and we'll set up those parent-child relationships again. Child to parent, child to parent, and this is a child to this is a parent, and lastly this is a child to this is a parent. So don't worry about this red arrow, it's just click on the parent-child relationships. And we don't need to set the last one because it's already a parent. Next we'll hit the escape key, turn off the tool, and let's set the pivots now. In this case I'm not going to worry about the orientation or direction. I'll show you some tools to do that a little bit later. Before we wanted Z up on everything, but we'll just show that in just a minute. For now, I'm just dropping the pivots in here. And this one will pivot along this axis. Now, to show you how this works, we'll just drag a group, and if you put this in multiple gizmos mode, you can see the multiple pivots. And I can use some tools like this one, set pivot on world axis, and that'll make everything Z up. And this one's already Z up, so I'm not going to worry about it. And another tool, this tool right here, align pivots with given pivot, and I'll pick its parent. So I click on the align tool and pick its parent. And it's actually pretty close right now, but there's still an issue right now. So let's go to the top view so you can see. So its parent is in this direction. So when I align the pivots, it's going in that direction too, which is close, but you'll get a little wobble on the back axis. So we'll bring up another tool, and there are other tools to align the pivots, but I'm going to show this one as well. So this is pivot transformation mode. If I click this, notice the rotation is kind of pasteled out. That's how you can tell if you're in, in pivot translation mode. So I'm just going to move this and rotate it down so that the y-axis is in line with the, with the model. That's about right. And now I can get out of pivot transformation mode. And if I look at this object, I can see the pivot is off, so we need to align it back to its parent. So now you can see how it's right along that axis. Lastly, I'm just going to set up the kinematic links now. So we'll set this as a pivot. And this one will be a spherical. And this will be a pivot. Last one, this one will be a pivot. And notice it's trying to pivot around the z-axis as well, so I'm going to change that to the x-axis. And now that rotates around, and it swivels the spherical. This one rotates in this direction and up and down, because it's using pivots from both objects there. And lastly, all I need to do is set up my limits on there and we'd have this done too as well. So let's jump over to this model. And instead of setting all the individual parent-child relationships, we're going to do this in assembly mode. So first I'll create some assembly groups. We'll create four of them for this example. And we'll rename them. This one will be frame. This one will be lower. This one we'll call pivot, and call this one shock. And then we'll put the appropriate parts in those assembly groups. So this will be lower. I'll drag that up to lower we'll item. This one I'll put in pivot. And hide those. And then we'll grab this one in shock and hide that as well. And lastly, I'll just put the rest of this stuff in the frame one and hide that. 
Now, just to clean the assembly tree up, I'm going to clear all the empty groups. I've got these four assembly groups inside the master assembly. So let's go in assembly mode and start putting the pivots in their proper location. That's fine, that's fine. The pivot one we'll put right up here. And the shock we'll put right here. Now, inside the shock, I want to break this down to a couple extra assembly groups. And I'm doing this in part mode. This one I'm going to name upper and this one name lower. And now the upper shock we'll put in the upper assembly and the lower in the lower. Now back in assembly mode I can set these pivots as well and we'll put this pivot right here. I wasn't really worried about orientation because we're going to work on that one that we did before with the uh, world axis. So I'm going to select all the assemblies and put those in multiple kismos mode so we can see the different directions. And we'll set the pivot on the world axis. And that makes sure we're all going in the same direction and orientation. You can still adjust the angle as long as the direction and orientation is the same. So the lower one, we want to have it go along this axis. Still we want to remain in the same orientation. There's a few different ways of doing it, but I'm going to do this from the side view and click this one. And this is another way to get the pivot transformation. And I can actually use numeric values to type it in. And now it's going to be picked up from its parent, so we want to make sure its parent has the same axis. So we'll click that and drag it to 32 degrees as well. Now when I get back out of pivot transformation mode, now we have the pivots going in the right direction. So now let's set up our kinematic conditions. This is going to be a pivot along the x-axis. And this is going to be a pivot along the x-axis as well. The shock is going to be a pivot, and I want that to move together. So I'll make that a pivot along the x. And the upper and lower. The upper, we don't want to really pivot at all. So we're going to leave that as rigid. And the lower wants to be a linear. And we're going to do that along the y-axis. So now that those are all set up, we still have this issue where it would need to be two parents to work correctly, and it won't work correctly. So we're going to leave those individual. We're not going to parent those, and we'll just cheat a little bit here. So I'm going to move the timeline, and we'll grab the lower object and just free drag it up. And if we click on the lower, I can see I can drag this around. And that all works together with the kinematics. But we need to move this object first. Now notice in the assembly tree, there's another level here. So we want to actually move it from the pivot level. And we're going to put it right on that point. And then we're going to drag that right over the center of that hole. And we can move timeline again and just drag this back and do the same thing. Drag the pivot over to that part. And we can use that in orthographic projection to make that easier to see. And we're going to drag that right on the center. And it's not as elegant as a full kinematic system, but it does help to have some kinematic structure when doing these kinds of animations.